I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 5th of August 2024. Displayed here all the list of articles we are going to discuss today. We have chosen article from yesterday's newspaper as well. So without much delay, let us get into the news article discussion. Look at this article about cloudburst in Himachal. Make note of this news. You can use it in your main answer writing for your substantiation part. Now in this news article discussion, let us see what is cloudburst. See, according to India Meteorological Department IMD, cloudburst or sudden heavy rainstorms were more than 10 cm of rainfall in less than an hour over a small area of about 10 square kilometer occurs. So by this definition, 5 cm of rainfall in an hour period over the same area could also be categorized as cloudburst. So what are the geographical reasons for the cloudburst? See the first thing is high humidity. Secondly, low temperature and slow winds. These create a perfect storm for rapid cloud condensation and leading to cloudburst. To tell it in simple words, as temperature rises, the atmosphere increases moisture holding capacity and this results in short intense rainfall causing floods in mountain and urban flooding in cities. So this is how cloudburst actually occurs. Now let us see the characteristics of cloudburst. So the first one is intensity. It has extremely heavy rainfall of an exceeding 100 mm per hour and do concentrated in a very short period. This is a very important characteristic of a cloudburst. Second thing is locality. It is highly localized. Typically, it affects area of a few square kilometers. Then third thing is it causes flash floods. That is rapid accumulation of rainwater leading to sudden and severe flash floods landslides and debris flow and the fourth important thing is duration usually it lasts for a minute to an hour but causes substantial damage due to its intensity now let us see which area in india is vulnerable to this cloudburst see the himalayan regions obviously it is common in states of uttarakhand himachal pradesh and jammu and kashmir due to the orographic lifting of moist air masses then secondly western guards areas like kerala karnataka maharashtra due to monsoon season driven by the interaction of moist southwest monsoon winds with the mountain ranges causes flash floods. Then third region is northeastern region. States like Assam, Mehalaya experiences cloudburst due to heavy monsoonal rain and regions complex topography. And the final thing is desert and semi-arid regions. See occasionally cloudburst in Rajasthan and parts of Gujarat during monsoon leads to cloudburst. Projections indicate further temperature increases of 1.5 degrees Celsius during 2020 to 2040 and 2 degrees Celsius during 2040 to 2060, potentially exacerbating cloudburst events. So predicting cloudburst remains a significant challenge, short time frame. A dense network of radar would be required to detect the likelihood of cloudburst, but this would be expensive. However, meteorologists can identify areas prone to heavy rainfall on short range scale and pinpointing regions and weather conditions conducive to cloudburst can help mitigate damages. And understanding these factors can also minimize the impacts of cloudburst. So these are all very important facts that you have to remember about cloudburst. In this news article discussion, we saw about the characteristics of cloudburst, then we saw where where exactly the cloudburst occurs and what are the challenges in tackling it. So these learned points. Now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. According to the news article, the Kerala government has urged the central government to declare recent landslides in Wayanad as a national disaster. So in this news article discussion, let us understand the definition of disaster, its legal backup and what are the benefits of declaring a national disaster. So let's start with the definition of disaster. So the definition of disaster is defined in the Disaster Management Act 2005. According to section 2d of the act disaster means catastrophe mishap calamity or grave occurrence in any area arising from natural or man-made causes as per the act the ministry of home affairs is the nodal ministry for disaster management there are also institutional structure for disaster management for example at the national level there are four important institutions the first one is national disaster management authority it ensures disaster management policies and effective responses secondly national executive committee it is responsible for preparation of disaster management plan third is national institute of disaster management it provides training and capacity building and the fourth one is national disaster response force this force has trained professional for specialized responses and at the state and district level we have the state disaster management authority and district disaster management authority respectively so this is about the definition of what is a disaster and the legal backup now let us see what is a national disaster and what are the criteria for it remember there is no provision 
to declare a disaster as a national disaster. The 10th Finance Commission, that is 1995 to 2000, it defined national calamity as a calamity of rarest severity which affects one third of the population. However, the Financial Commission did not define a calamity of rarest severity. On the other hand, there are certain general considerations. Let us see them one by one. First one is the severity of the impact like loss of life and infrastructure damage. Then the economic impact like cost of damage, relief and rehabilitation. Then capacity of state, the ability of a state to respond to the disaster and finally geographical impact that is the damage to environment and risk of a secondary disaster such as a landslide. So with this basic knowledge now let us see what are all the benefits of declaration of a national disaster. See the first thing is we'll get central assistance. It includes financial assistance from National Disaster Response Fund, Calamity Relief Fund and National Calamity Contingency Fund. This NCCF is 100% funded by central government and also the particular state will get deployment of more steps. Secondly, there will be a coordinated effort between center and the state. This will make the response more effective. Thirdly, financial relief for affected communities will be provided. This includes providing additional time to repayment of loans and also new credit for the affected people. Also, remember this fact, the funding mechanism works as per the rules of National Policy on Disaster Management 2009. Under this policy, there will be a National Crisis Management Committee headed by the cabinet secretary this committee will assess the damage and provide for the relief assistance so these are all very important facts that you have to remember about national disaster so with these learned points now let us move on to the next article look at this article about cci in order to achieve the net zero emissions by 2070 the cci is thinking about enforcing competition policies that improve innovations while also considering environmental concerns the CCI is also considering to include sustainability practices in the national competition policy in the future, similar to other countries. This is what the article is talking about. So in this background, let us revise about Competition Commission of India, that is CCI, from the prelims perspective. Let's see about the statutory backing of this commission. The Competition Act 2002 provided for setting up of this CCI. It was established in the year 2003 and the commission is composed of chairperson and a minimum of two and maximum of six members appointed by the central government. The commission is also required to give opinion on competition issues on a reference received from a statutory authority established under any law. So the main purpose of this CCI is to create and sustain fair competition in the economy that will provide a level playing field to the producers and also make the market work for the welfare of the consumers. Talking about the vision of CCI, its vision is to promote and sustain an enabling competitive culture through engagement and enforcement. This would also inspire businesses to be fair, competitive and innovative. It also enhances customer welfare and supports economic growth. Now let us briefly see about the role of CCI. See the first important role played by CCI is to promote practices having adverse effect on competition. For example, Competition Commission of India imposed a penalty of 936 crore rupees on Google for abusing its dominant position with respect to its Play Store policies. So this is a very good example of how CCI prevents adverse effect on competition. Then it helps to promote and sustain competition in the market and it ensures freedom of trade carried out by other participants in the market in India. Apart from these roles, CCI have certain functions to perform. It works hard to promote competition in Indian market and it actively enforces laws against anti-competition practices. It also regulates a merger and acquisitions and it continuously work to simplify and streamline procedures. So these are all very important facts that you have to remember about CCI. CCI is a statutory body. It has a chairperson appointed by central government and its main goal is to maintain the competitive culture in the Indian economy. Look at this three statements are given and you have to find which of the statement given here is or are correct. Here the first statement and third statement is correct but the second statement is incorrect. The Competition Act 2002 regulates both anti-corruption agreement and abuse of dominance. So this statement is alone incorrect except that the first and third statement are correct. So the correct answer here is option B2 and B. So with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening.